Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about acid-base neutralization reactions. Now at the top I've got a whole bunch of antacids. Actually what's happening in your stomach when you end up with heartburn or with acid in your stomach and you take an antacid, that's actually a neutralization reaction. Similarly, if you've ever made volcanoes at school or at home, usually you're making an, an acid-base neutralization reaction which produces carbon dioxide which gives you the bubbles to make it react. So we have a few learning goals for today. Identify neutralization reactions, predict the products or reactants of neutralization reactions, and to balance neutralization reactions. So let's start off with the two different types. The first is a, a neutralization reaction with the hydroxide base. So here you would have something like this, where you have hydrochloric acid and sodium hydroxide. So we know we're dealing with an acid-base neutralization with a hydroxide base because it's sodium hydroxide. So how do we know this is acid-base reaction? Well, you have an acid plus a base, and that will give you water and salt. Salt is just an ionic compound. So here our acid is hydrochloric acid, our base is sodium hydroxide, our salt is sodium chloride, and then the water is H2O. So we've, if we see all of these parts, we know we're dealing with an acid-base neutralization with a hydroxide base. So how does this work? I'm going to get out of the way for this one and we'll see how this type of reaction works. So if you have hydrochloric acid and you have sodium hydroxide and you put them in water, we already know that they're going to ionize and so the um, hydrochloric acid turns into a proton and a, a chloride ion and then the NaOH will turn into a sodium ion and a hydroxide ion. Well, the proton and the hydroxide are going to come together to form water and the sodium and chlorine are going to come together to form sodium chloride. So let's take a look at how we would predict these types of reactions. Well, we know for one thing that we're going to end up with water as a product, so we can write water right off the bat. And we know that water is coming from the OH from the base, so we can cross out that OH, and from the proton and the acid, so we can cross that out. That leaves us with potassium and bromine, which are going to come together to form the salt. So that will give us KBr. Now the potassium and the bromine, potassium has a one plus charge, the bromine one negative, so when they come together it gives us potassium bromide with no subscripts. Now if we wanted to balance this, so I'll take out these that I've crossed out, if we're looking to balance this, we have one potassium on each side, one oxygen on each side, one two hydrogen plus two hydrogen on the other side, and one bromine and one bromine, so it's all balanced out. Let's take a look at the next example. We know that water is going to be a product and that comes from the hydroxide base, the OH, and the H from the acid, so we'll cross those out. And that leaves us with lithium and nitrate, so that will be our salt, LiNO3. Now if we'd like to balance this one, we have one two H's, two H's over here, one oxygen, one oxygen over here, one lithium, one lithium, and one nitrate, and one nitrate. So it's all balanced out already for us. Let's now take a look at an acid-base neutralization reaction with a carbonate base. So here we would have this type of reaction. We know we're dealing with a carbonate base because we have calcium carbonate with an aqueous behind it. So we know that we're dealing with a base that happens to be a carbonate base. So a neutralization reactions with carbonate bases take this form. Acid plus base gives us salt plus water plus CO2. So that's something new that we didn't see with the hydroxide bases. So the acid in this case is hydrosulfuric acid. The base is the calcium carbonate. The salt is the calcium sulfate. And, or sulfide, and then we have water and carbon dioxide left over. So let's take a look at how this happens. Now the reaction with a carbonate base is a little bit more complicated because it occurs in two steps. The first is the formation 
of carbonic acid and then the carbonic acid breaks down to form the water and the carbon dioxide. So let's see what happens. Here we have hydrochloric acid and we know that's going to ionize to form the proton and the chloride ion. And then we have sodium carbonate. So sodium carbonate is going to form two sodium ions and then we'll have the carbonate and one of our protons here, or our proton, is going to attach to that carbonate. Now we still have a sodium that's on its own and the carbonate has only one proton, not two, to make the carbonic acid. So another uh, hydrochloric acid will come along, it will ionize, and then we'll have a new sodium chloride formed and the other hydrogen will come to attach to the CO3 and now you have the um, carbonic acid. Now carbonic acid in water decomposes very rapidly to form H2O and CO2. So now you have the sodium chlorides, you have the water that you can always expect with the result of a, a neutralization reaction, and the carbon dioxide that you can come to expect with the product of a, a, carbonic, or a carbonate neutralization reaction. Let's take a look at how we would predict the products of this type of reaction and then balance them. So we can start off by knowing that we're going to produce water and we're going to produce carbon dioxide. So right off the bat we can write those down. We know those come from the carbonate part of the uh, base and they come from the hydrogen part of the acid. So what are we left with? Potassium and bromine. So that's going to be our salt. K Br. And we know that potassium has a 1 plus charge, bromine a 1 negative. If we do some crossing over or zero sum, there's one of each. We don't write subscript 1, so our formula is KBr. Let's take a, uh, and let's check that this one is balanced. So I'm just going to erase these scratches. There we go. So potassium, we have 2 on the left, only 1 on the right. So let's put a 2 on the right. Now that affected our bromine, so we have two on the right, only one on the left. So let's put a two over there. Now let's check our carbon. We have one carbon on the left, one on the right. Let's check our oxygen. We have three on the left. We have one plus two, three on the right. We'll check our hydrogen, two on the left, two on the right, so we're all balanced. Let's take a look at the next example. We know our products are going to involve water and carbon dioxide. So we know that comes from the, in this case, the bicarbonate base and the H from the acid. So that leaves us with lithium and sulfur. So we'll end up with lithium sulfide as our product. Now we know lithium has a one plus charge and sulfur a two minus charge. If we cross over, do zero sum, we need two lithiums for each sulfur. So we end up with Li2S as our formula. Now let's check if this is balanced. So we have one lithium, we have two on the right, so we need to put a two in front of this compound here. So now our lithiums are balanced out. We have one sulfur on each side, so that looks good. We have one, two, plus two, so four hydrogens on the left. We have only two on the right, so let's put a two here. Now we have three times two, six oxygen. We have two here plus two here, so we need two more. I'm gonna put it there. So we have two plus two times two is four, so two plus four is six oxygen. And we have two carbon on the left and two carbon on the right. So now we're all balanced out. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you identify neutralization reactions? Can you predict the products of new or reactants of neutralization reactant reactions? And can you balance neutralization reactions? If you can do this, fantastic. If not, please rewatch the video. And if you're still having trouble, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye bye.